Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 7 of our texture series in Unity. Now that we have a working system to create our textures dynamically, I want to look at some of the ways we can optimize and um, fix some of the bugs in our system. I'm going to cover five topics. Uh, the first one is that right now our system works, but it's very sort of trapped within its own class. So I want to look at A, making the uh, textures and colors um, into parameters for our uh, texture maker function as well as actually uh, returning some types instead of simply returning void and working within the class so that if we had an external class we could access this function, get a texture out of it, and then do what we need to with it. Second thing is what do we do if the texture count is just one? In this case, um, you know, we don't need to go through the whole process of actually layering stuff because there's nothing really to layer. So let's dive into our uh, first part here of parameterizing our uh, function. Okay, so now we're in mono develop, and we've got here um, our start function, which currently everything kind of runs from the start function. We are getting our component, and then we are making our texture and making our sprite all, like I said, kind of trapped within this sprite maker class. And what we really want to do is make it so that we could, chances are we're not going to be making this with, the sprite maker class isn't going to be also holding the information that we want. We're going to have maybe a game manager that knows, oh, the player has this hair, this face, and these eyes. It's going to give us that information, and then the sprite maker goes to work. So instead of just saying make texture here, I want to give it some parameters. First thing I'm going to give it is our texture 2D layers, as well as our color array layer colors. I'm going to change this to be called texture array and I'm going to change this to be called color array. So this would have worked keeping those the same but I am changing those just to avoid any confusion. What we're really doing now is saying when I'm getting this layers zero dot width I'm getting the layer that we're passing in. And now and obviously in order for this to work now any function or any time that a class wants to call this function it's going to need to pass in that an array of textures and an array of colors. So let's do that in our start function. We can actually kind of imagine the start function as if it was some sort of external function that's doing these things as well. So now this has to pass in texture array and color array in order for us to get the results that we want. Now the other part of this um, is that we have our make sprite function and likewise here I don't want to just like right now, it just makes Sprite looks up at this texture that we have within this class and makes the Sprite from that. Instead, I want to pass in a texture here. So I'm going to say texture 2D, and we'll just call it texture, and that's what we're passing in. And now here, we'll need to change these texts, which are currently drawing from this up here, and instead make them draw from this parameter. So we'll say texture, texture.width, and texture.height. Which now means if we had any texture 2D, you know, not the one necessarily that we made in this function, we could simply pass it into our make sprite function and get a sprite out of it. Now, here we need to pass in text in the same way this now needs that parameter to um, be passed into it, which we're passing from this within our class right now. But again, you could almost pretend that all of this right here is in some external game manager class. This is the information we have, and we're just passing it into the sprite maker. Now, the other side of this is that what we really want to do is return um, the information. Instead of just using this to set this internal variable, let's return, instead of void, we're going to return a texture 2D. We're also going to make this a public function so that, like I said, an external class could get get access to it. And so now, instead of making, what we're doing right now is we're just saying text, text equals this, so on and so forth. I'm going to rename this a little bit here. We're going to, we're going to create a new texture 2D inside of our function, and we're going to call it new texture. Uh, where else do we have new texture? We'll go here because we want it to be that height and width. Um, 
Oh, back up and this is not the most efficient way to do this, but because we also have the variable up here called text, we can't just um, we can't just rename it, unfortunately, or uh, refactor it. But it's not that huge of a function, so we can do this pretty easily. New texture, new texture dot apply. If we're doing anything with our wrap mode or our filter mode, we can do it there as well. And then after all of this is done, we can return new texture. So now ultimately what all of this is doing is finally it's handing us this new texture and new texture 2D and saying, here you go, do what you will with this new image that I've made you. And what we're gonna wanna do in our start function is actually set this good old fashioned text to the result of our make texture function. So we'll say text equals make texture passing in the information. Lastly, down here in our sprite, we can actually do the same thing. We've kind of actually done it here in this. We're saying sprite new sprite um, equals all of a sudden, and actually what we can do here is say public sprite, and instead of even creating a new sprite, because this all just occurs on one line, we can just return sprite.create and we can actually get rid of this well we'll cut it because what we're going to do instead is we're going to paste it up here and how we're going to paste that is we're going to then cut this and paste it there so now what we're doing is saying rend is our sprite renderer we're going to make text a uh, Text is going to be the texture that we make based on our layers and our colors. And then the sprite renderer's sprite is going to be the result of us making that sprite. And we do not want two semicolons there. So now what we have here is the same functionality. If we jump, clean this up a little bit. If we jump back over to Unity, we should see here if I hit play, Something is missing. Oh, we've got an array index out of range. Oh, I know why this is saying this. The issue is not that, it's not an actually an issue with this, it's the issue that layers.0 doesn't exist right now. Because we renamed our um, texture array and color array, we actually don't have anything in here. So let me make this one. We can add our alien head and our alien eyes alien mouth color array we need to do as well green oops. we'll make this more of a yellow for the eyes and a deep blue for the mouth now we should see when we hit play Something is still not reacting here. Oh, new texture. Had one of those more hiding in there. Like I say, it's best if you can refactor stuff, but the way that I had changed the name, we couldn't unfortunately do that right then and there. Let me double back here for a second. Let's try this one more time. There we go. So now we're getting that same functionality again, that um, everything is working the same way, but what we're doing is we're passing from a function, we're passing in the variables that we need, and then we're passing out a new type that we can use in future, future functions. And so that's what's now gonna give us the ability that if we said, if we had say a game manager object here, that could then, you know, pass in a, several image layers and color layers and it would give it give us back the texture 2D that we could do what we needed whatever we needed to with it. So that is the first part of this. We've now made ourselves a much more public and a much more accessible sprite maker system and texture maker system so that we can um, pass in variables from elsewhere in our game into our sprite maker and make use of it there. Next, let's move on to what happens when our texture count equals one. 
And actually, on that same note, what happens if it equals zero? As we just saw there, there was suddenly this array issue when I didn't have anything in the array, that function couldn't work at all. So let's jump back over to our mono develop into our script. And let's take a look here. So right about here is where we are, actually right here is we were, where we are first accessing our layers array. And if this array is a, has a length of zero, then we can't do anything at all. So let's do a quick bug check for that and say, if layers dot length equals zero, then what we can do is we'll say debug dot log error no image layer information in array. And in this case, what we can do is we have a couple options here. We could return um, we could return null or something like that and just return a null texture. Or we could, let's just do return, and I believe it's texture 2d dot white texture and what that does is that returns a texture that has it's a very small I believe it's a 4x4 texture that has values of 1 1 1 1 for every pixel so it's completely white and so if we if we see suddenly just a, this huge white block we know something's gone wrong and we're logging this error to let us know that as well and now if the other if we have is what if it's only one layer? In which case, all we need to really do is just return that layer. Um, so what we can say here is if layers dot length equals one, then debug log, we're not gonna log an error this time because we can still quote unquote run the function. Um, but we should probably let the um, let the player let the developer know, hey, you, you only have one one layer here. Why are you using this? So we'll say only one image layer present. Are you sure you need to make a texture? And in this case, we will just return layers zero. So we're just going to return that first and only layer and say here is your texture. You've already given it to me and it's here it is back as it is. Now there is a little bit of a funkiness here because say you were using this to apply the color. Um, you we're not applying the color right now and that's something that we would you then have to decide oh do you want to do another if statement and say oh apply the color first. So kind of a decision you have to make there. Right now I'm going to say if you're only passing in one color or one layer rather then you probably just want that one layer and we'll leave it at that for now. So that solves our issues of if there is no texture information or only one layer of texture information. So our next step is looking at what happens when our layers are different sizes and that's going to be take a little bit more involved look and actually this video is running a little bit longer than I was expecting already so I'm going to break this one off here and in our next video we'll finish up these bug fixes and look at some next steps for what you can do with the information you've learned in this video series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.